and we can now lift off from the pad and we are flying into the air it's a pretty powerful rocket and obviously we have a pretty small payload for this gargantuan well actually this rocket is not that big um, a normal sized rocket in terms of getting big payloads into lko and we are now almost detaching as there we go so yeah, I'm gonna try to get this space station to about 200 kilometers above Kerbin. So we have quite a bit of margin uh, in terms of other missions as well. Uh, we have put the first module into orbit and it is a pretty simple module just we have i believe two science labs and a reaction wheel a probe core and some rtgs so yeah really really simple space station in general i forgot to add separatrons to the bottom stage uh, to, to push it away from the space station and probably if i did then uh, it would push the space station as well because of the exhaust so every time once i was docked i had to go into the tracking station to remove the debris we are now on our second launch, I'm now creating my maneuver node to get to the space station to get a nice intersect. And I'm not that good at getting intersects above Kerbin, but um, this video's got good practice for me, I guess. So yeah. And we can now make another maneuver node as kind of a mid-course correction to get as close as possible to the space station. And this module, that there are, I believe, three parts. Well, actually, no. There are two parts where you can dock. Um, and for some reason, I just added a just normal docking port on the capsule on the front. Even though we didn't really... Well, we can't use it because it will get in the way of the solar panels. So, yeah, I don't really know what my thought process was behind that. There are two places where we can dock just normal size spacecraft and then a senior docking port on the fuel tank. Now, as you can see right here, I'm speeding this, this up by like 10 times. I wanted to use the docking alignment mod or something, but uh, I was kind of having difficulties and I wasn't really executing it well. So, eventually, I just decided to use the lazy method because it's easy. So that's just what I'm doing right here. It's a lot easier than constantly using RCS. I'm just, I'm just using RCS for little adjustments of velocity and stuff. Um, pretty, pretty easy. So there we go. We have now docked with the other part of the space station, and now the next three launches will be the fuel tank, which is the launch that I'm going to be doing right here. I've added some boosters because otherwise we wouldn't have enough fuel to get the fuel tank into orbit. It's gonna be a, uh, just a big orange fuel tank, just like our boosters. And I've disabled the fuel flow from the orange fuel tank so that we do not drain fuel from it. Because otherwise there isn't really a point of using that fuel tank. And to be honest, I don't really think that I'm going to use that fuel tank at all. It's just, it looks cool. But we are in the sky for quite some time now and um, just raising our apoapsis. I like to raise our apoapsis to about 150 to 175 kilometers uh, when trying to dock at 200 kilometers. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but I don't know. It's just common practice for me, really. So, making another maneuver node. For some reason, I constantly wanted it to get to make it really precise, even though I could have done like 80 corrections on the way. Making another mid course correction. I didn't really have to do that because I could have just killed off my velocity relative to the target and then just flown to the target, but I didn't. Kind of overshot here, but didn't really make that much of a difference as you can see this is what i was talking about just killing off my speed and then well etc so we are now approaching the space station once again i'm just constantly using the lazy method of docking because i can't really be bothered to be a normal functioning person and yeah 
that's it really I, I just can't be bothered and this is the first launch of our solar panel so we have the fuel tank now nice installed and it is filled with fuel and now we are launching the solar panel i'm just gonna speed up the process by like eight times here because well you've seen the launches by now and they are just really standard and boring and whatever so um the the only issue with the solar panel launches were that they would constantly spin out um so i don't really know what caused it i guess just the the lack of weight at the at the top because the solar panels are really lightweight but yeah it, um, i i could make up for it after that and the same for the the next launch in the next launch i uh, did another solar panel launch and we are docked by the way in the next launch is also a solar panel launch and the same thing happened there uh, i'm just gonna skip this launch just i show you the first part of the launch and then just pretty much immediately skip to the approach because well, this is the fifth launch now you've seen four others so so here we are arrived at the space station killing off our speed and approaching for the final time this video here we can see the the very big space station and to be honest we didn't really need these solar panels because we already had like four rtgs which i i guess is more than enough to power an entire uh, space station but i don't know the solar panels just look really space stationy and i want a space stationy thing because it's a space station. Really well explained, mate. Incredible job. But we are now approaching the docking port of the space station for the final time in this video. We are docked! Yes! The Xenoth space station is complete and that is just brilliant news. We are safe in an orbit with the entire space station and we can now in a second quickly delete the piece of debris that was flying next to us. We can now orient ourselves into a nice way that the solar panels have a nice view of the sun and they can produce a lot of energy which I am doing right here. We have quite a bit of reaction wheels which is probably really unrealistic for a space station but a, it's Kerbal Space Program, you get what I'm saying. So yeah, in a second we can inflate the airlocks and then it is time to end the video. So please leave in the comments down below if you want to go to this space station. Just say your Kerbal name and then I will send three of you to the space station in the next video. Probably using an SSTO, something like that. It's gonna be really fun, gonna do a lot of experiments and... We're all gonna have a very great time. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe with post notifications on so you never miss a video. And I hope to see you in the next one.